All right, welcome everybody to the June 8th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As you're all aware, you've been on the call before, two things that we have to abide by, the antitrust policy that is currently displayed on the screen and our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. So for announcements today, we have the standard Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter announcement. Uh, this newsletter goes out every Friday. If you have anything that you would like to include in that newsletter, please do leave a link at the, um, or a comment at the link in the wiki page um, that is linked here in the agenda. And then the second uh, announcement is a reminder that um, Dave, David Boswell has put together the why and why not contribute to an open source community in a wiki page. It basically lists all of the individual items that were presented last week. Uh, and so he's looking for additional comments or ideas or thoughts on that so that he can update the, the presentation. So please do review and provide any sort of comments to that particular wiki page. Uh, the next announcement is that Stephen will be presenting at the Identity Special Interest Group meeting on Thursday, the 15th, so a week from today, uh, immediately following the TOC call. Uh, so if you are interested in understanding zero knowledge proofs with high school math, uh, please do consider joining that uh, SIG call. Any other announcements that anybody has that they would like to make? Right. So uh, we did not receive any quarterly reports this week. Uh, we were supposed to receive the cello one last week, um, but that has not yet come in. Uh, I did send a reminder to the cello maintainers on Discord, uh, I think on Monday when I was uh, putting the agenda together or finalizing the agenda for distribution. So um, I haven't seen anything come back on that reminder. So we will. Uh, see what we can do to follow up. Um, we also have the sawtooth report that's still outstanding. Um, I believe that I didn't put a link in here, but I did uh, send another reminder to the uh, sawtooth community on the Discord channel uh, to let them know why these things are important. Uh, again, no response on that. Uh, Arun, I, I when I was looking to see about the cello one, I also checked to see if that uh, action that you wrote had created an issue. I did not find an issue for cello. Uh, just curious what might have happened with that. Right, Tracy. The, um, I forgot to ask Rai to add um, the, uh, the, the, so we need to create a token and uh, the token does not exist. So the action was not triggered. Um, I can work with Rai after this call and get that set up. Yeah, that okay. was my fault. Sorry. No worries. I uh, just wanted to, to make sure I wasn't missing something. Um, I thought maybe I missed where the issue was being created. So I wanted to check on that, make sure that uh, there wasn't anything there. So that'd be great. Uh, we'll get those set up and that will help us to track both of these particular issues for Sawtooth and Cello uh, to see if we could get some action uh, via GitHub. Any questions on quarterly reports or comments on the quarterly reports? Okay, so for upcoming reports, we do have the Firefly one that is due to come in today. Uh, so hopefully we will see that one showing up. And then um, I think the next one isn't due for a couple of weeks. So we'll uh, get that one obviously put into the agenda for next week for, um, can't remember which one it is, but I think there's a couple of them that are coming due uh, in a couple of weeks. So we'll get those out there. So for the agenda today, we have uh, the CNCF project review. Um, so I know Arun, you had sent something out this morning. Uh, about an hour ago on the Discord channel to kind of talk us through what it is that we're, we're looking at with the CNCF project review. So I think at this point, I will hand it off to you to take us through that. 
Thanks, Tracy. Um, I can share my screen. I hope I'm sharing the right. Um, yeah, we can see the CNCF GOC review process. Perfect. Um, okay, let's just um, understand. Um, um, so I, I made notes looking into a few documents and also watching through some of the video recordings of this, how CNCF meetings run, the TUC meetings run. So apparently there were a few um, observations that I made, which could also help us in in, um, in how we run our meetings. And um, so um, I'll, I'll keep this discussion purely objectively, just to understand how those meetings run, than to compare with ours and then, um, and feel free to stop me anywhere in between. And if you want to bring up any point or maybe uh, take an action item that we can discuss later. So um, first few observations on how uh, the, the TOC process is run within the CNCF. Uh, one of the observation that was evident to me while I was reading through. So um, I, I read through some of these documents as a new person uh, who is trying to enter into the CNCF community. And um, what I found from the TUC documents was that all of the, um, the wordings, the way the contents were written, all of them sounded um, uh, positive in a way that there were so many encouraging words uh, for me to, when I read those things, it felt like I should go and contribute immediately. And um, so, so from a project's perspective, let's say if I had a new project to be proposed to the TUC, one thing that uh, stood out to me was that the way it was written was, hey, um, there is incentive for me to go and uh, um, up apply my project under CNCF. And then after the sandbox or maybe incubation process, there is also incentive for me uh, to go and apply for the next process. And the way these incentives are called out is not by saying that, hey, if you do the next process, you will get these benefits, but rather the way it is uh, put out is through constant reminders, right? Saying that, hey, um, so you are now a sandbox project, but um, here are the next three actionable items. And if you feel like you meet these three uh, criteria, then maybe you are you are in for the next uh, next phase of your project within CNCF. So um, I like that approach um, when I read through that process and. Um, to set the context, CNCF has uh, three uh, life cycle, project life cycle phases, starting from sandbox, incubation, and graduation. There was a direct entry allowed uh, to incubation, uh, and um, with with of course some extra checks that they have put up. So, um, talking through what is sandbox uh, project intake, and then CNCF. Um, the sandbox project also do require TOC approvals. And um, one of the things that stood out was also in terms of review on how these project intake happens. So uh, CNCF has multiple tags. Uh, um, I don't know how to equate it to hyperledgers um, groups that we have, but these technical assessment groups, they, they are focused on certain areas of technology. And uh, there were tags on security, there were tags on storage, there were tags on compute. Um, maybe I'm, I'm forgetting whatever I read, but there were multiple tags. And if you go through one of the meeting recordings, they also do a tag review. And each of these tags are led by independent um, groups who have their own, um, who run their own meetings. They have their own agenda uh, set. And the TOC has, uh, uh, regular cadence calls with these tags and they review the recommendations coming in from these tags. So that's about the tag review process and that happens for every sandbox proposal that happens. Um, the next thing was in terms of uh, the review purpose. Uh, what so, so the CNCF, um, um, TOC has set a specific uh, agenda for why they want to review. 
and this also serves as a reminder for project team to understand the importance of, of the review that they put up. And um, it is annual review that project teams go through. Uh, there are two objectives through the review process, right? One is they would of course like to know um, if project is on track. And the second one is if projects need additional help uh, from the TOC. And when I say, if project needs additional help from the TOC, um, I saw that they go to the extent of asking, hey, um, so you are a project which, uh, which, I mean, your project would be successful if you have, let's say, access to the cloud service providers. So maybe we'll go to talk, go and talk to this company and they, they may offer you. So the TOC uh, does help um, working with the staff to get those those kind of questions addressed as well for the projects. So um, one thing that I could not um, clearly put in a pointer was how would TOC measure if projects were on track? Uh, but based on some of the other observations that I had through when I was searching through the documents and the videos, what I found was, um, so uh, we'll also discuss that in detail, that the annual process review of the projects, they also have a section for goal setting of each project. And in the, re in the review process, the goals um, are measured uh, as well, right? So that's about the purpose of um, the TOC review that happens within CNCF. Now let's continue on understanding how the process itself is set up and how the process is uh, run. Um, so the the way process uh, the the way it starts is the CNC of staff will go and send an email reminder to the uh, project maintainers. Um, one thing that is appreciable over here is uh, these serve as a pers personalized uh, request to the project maintainers, and um, I like the way those emails were sent out, asking for projects um, in a way that. Tell them, hey, it is important, not just for you, not just for us, but it is also important for our community members to understand how crucial is your project to the success of entire um, uh, the, the CNCF's uh, goal that we have. And once the project team receives uh, the reminder, they, um, I mean, they would uh, submit a PR review uh, similar to how we have within Hyperledger Foundation. And um, one thing that happens over here is the project team is given about two months of time to send the report from the time the email was sent. And in that two months, project team is supposed to, uh, as I said previously, that each project will set their own goals, right? So uh, the project team is supposed to come back and say how they how they met the goals that they have set for themselves uh, over an year ago. So, um, and also at the same time in the in that particular review process, they are required to set the goal for the next year um, in, in, the, in the review process. So um, the goal measurement is done uh, by the TVC. And again, I could not find a concrete evidence of how uh, the goal is measured uh, by the TVC members. And of course, they also recognize that it is subjective. So a few of the things that um, they have called out in their review process, or at least in the in the documentation that I read through was that um, they have called out the importance that not everybody in the TUC may understand how the project team understands the project and how they respond to the goal setting and how, how to measure those things. However, TUC makes all the attempts to um, get the right answer to any doubt that they have. And this could mean that um, they will have uh, the the tags that we spoke about, go and review those. And they will also put the project's uh, review in open and request for comments from anybody. On, um, we'll also uh, see some of the other observations, right? So, which makes it unique. So that's about the review process. And, and of course, the TOC has set up some certain guidelines uh, for how to measure a project's health. And these are very similar uh, attributes like the way we were discussing in terms of uh, how many, what's the strength of the community and how many developers do they have, how many committers do they have, 
and what's the organization diversity all that aspect one additional thing that i found out through the review is that the cnc of projects they have a grafana like that i mean i think it's grafana dashboard itself um, i have added a link over here uh, let me see if i can pull that up um yeah this one so this dashboard uh, they call it dev stats uh, site and has certain attributes measured against each of the project um, we can see like these many dashboards are set up over here for instance there are pr comments related um, um, trending dashboards over a week or a month and all of that and and uh, the, the project teams um, are required to set um, this information in their review process I'm not sure if the latest review process is using LFX, but the, the one that I referenced is all from 2022, early 2022. Um, the project teams is supposed to set the link from this. And um, one additional observation is that there is enough opportunity for the project team. In, instead of asking them a specific questions on, hey, can you talk us through the diversity of um, let's say the developer diversity or committers diversity or organization diversity, the um, project team is given an opportunity to tell what they feel is important from their stats. Um, so of course, like TOC would be interested in certain aspects, which um, we can always review from the stats page. But uh, the one thing that I liked about it is where project teams are given freedom to express what according to them is important from the start. Um, and of course, um, there are projects which span across like a umbrella of projects instead of having like one big project. And uh, the uh, all of the sub projects are reported under one big umbrella project in the review process. Um, so one differentiation that I found in the uh, complete review process is the project teams have to go through uh, something called a sponsorship process. And this is not like one time sponsorship, which once you get, then um, the project has sponsorship forever. This is rather a annual sponsorship, um, which I could understand from the process. The annual sponsorship process is um, any project that comes in, um, for the sandbox requires at least TVs, three TVs members uh, to agree or maybe like sponsor the project. And um, the sponsorship stays with them for a year. And after a year, as per their annual process, they have to again up, go through the, um, the sponsorship. In, uh, and, and, and this is tied to their review as well. When the project is reviewed, the sponsorship either stays or it gets uh, revoked. And another important aspect that I found from the, the sponsorship aspect or maybe the voting aspect was, so let's say the project is now in a graduated state, that's the highest level. And uh, if after the review, if, oh, sorry, my bad. Okay, let's say the project is in incubation state and project applies to go to the next next phase, which is the, in, the graduation phase. And um, let's say at that point in time, uh, there are no sufficient votes from the TOC uh, saying that uh, this project is still not ready to go into graduation phase. The um, voting would immediately be converted this into uh, whether the project should stay in incubation phase. And um, let's say that for some reason, project fails to prove that they should continue staying in incubation phase as well the voting then turns into whether the project should be kept in sandbox phase. So there is flexibility in terms of how the projects are moved across the phases. And um, for each phase, there is voting done. So it's not that just because project could not move from incubation to graduation that it can stay in incubation forever. Uh, the, the moment um, comes where they will have to how to review that they can continue staying in incubation phase. That's one other difference that I could find from the review process. Um, so, and, and in terms of the uh, the TOC review, the 
reviews are put or rev um, the tag review uh, before it goes to the TOC from decision making. And of course, TOC is the decision maker, but uh, TOC recommends that the tags participate and uh, TOC will take every comment provided from the tag seriously. And those will be debated on in the review meetings. Um, the, um, there is also like an email sent to the community saying that there is a pending review and anybody could pitch in and add their comments. And um, I wanted to bring that up later, but let's say um, within the TOC, they designate one of the lead uh, and one of the TOC member to lead a particular project's review, right? So what happens is um, the TOC will designate one of the person from within among themselves. And then that person will be uh, the spokesperson for the project, we can say, or maybe uh, that person leads uh, the review process for the project, right? So the um, the assigned person will have a detailed review of project, reading through every aspect. And there is also a private uh, um, chat channel set up where the, only the TUC members will have discussions regarding the points brought up by the, the, by the lead who's reviewing. And once the TOC member who's designated has uh, done their sufficient review, they will bring that uh, the summary into the TOC meeting. And um, the summarized form of review discusses on focused points from each of the project. And the project team is also invited to join that particular meeting. So it, it's it's like among one of the among the TOC member, one of them is um, um, being an advocate for the project and and they are saying what went well what what can be done well in an objective form and they collect all the reviews from the tag and from the community uh, during that re review pending process that's one additional difference that i could observe from the cncf um so yeah the, 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 there is a, a fixed deadline for by, by when the project team is supposed to put up the review, uh, the project review, and that was two months. And, and the TOC can make decisions uh, to change the status of project, because if a project could not send an update for two months, then the question is about activeness or health, uh, healthiness of the project itself. And, um, so in the in just in terms of process review process, as I previously said, um, there is a section call out where instead of asking projects um, to answer certain things, the, the way it, there is a section where the way it is portrayed is, hey, uh, you're a project maintainer and then you're doing all that you can do at this phase of project. But here are the next three questions that if you feel you can answer them and um, it's like one line answer, maybe like the checkbox kind of questions, then maybe you're eligible to move into the next phase. So do give it a try and um, like come back with a proposal that you want to move to the next phase. And um, yeah, the project teams are sent an invite to join, requesting them to join the TOC call. and. There is a TOC representative who leads the project's the, the project status or report to the TOC. They would be advocate for the project. Um, right, so one addition thing that I could see uh, from the meeting recording was that the TOC did not um, like did due diligence before the, um, the re report was sent to the meeting, right? So in the, during the meeting, if a project team joined that call, then the TOC made sure that uh, they gave opportunity to the project team to talk a few other aspects which are which they could not put up in the report. And uh, this could be anything in terms of request, or this could be just in terms of comments or feedback that they want to collect or anything that the project team did not want to put up in the uh, written form in the report. Um, right, so uh, there was a free uh, text as well in the report where project team could uh, 
tell what according to them went well and what's the standpoint from their project. So um, I, I mean, I did not capture all these metrics, but uh, the uh, the kind of information that the TOC was looking for from a health standpoint was total contributors, organization diversity. The um, the adoption aspect is something that CNCF TOC strongly was following up with all the projects. So they would recommend projects to have a means of knowing how of how critical their project is or how often how widely is the project adopted across. Uh, the, the goal setting and the goal measurement is one other thing which gives opportunity to project team uh, to uh, to set the goal for the next year and it gives opportunity for the TOC to know if project is ambitious enough to go to go and do uh, next set of things. So um, in terms of responsibilities, uh, of course, there are additional responsibilities set up. It's not just like all the TOC members go through in their own leisure and then they review and then they um, they come back, but rather there is a responsible uh, lead or, or a TOC representative assigned for each of the project. And uh, the person who's designated is supposed to um, be the spokesperson or the voice of the project across all the forums from the chart of the private conversation that happens among the TUC members and the public review that happens through the email or um, even the project uh, team if they need more information. And they are supposed to summarize all of these discussions before they come for review into the TUC call. And, um, and we already spoke about the tags. And one thing that I um, liked from the the TOC process is also in terms of the way the project reports are brought to the TOC call. And they were not a verbose um, text when they were discussed in the TOC meetings, but rather a specific bullet points that were brought up because the lead um, already has vetted the, um, the document in detail. And if there are any contentious um, questions or topics, then they make bullet points out of those and then they bring those points for discussion. Um, so one, one more thing um, which stood out or which was different was in, in terms of technical due diligence. So um, when I read through the document, understanding what this technical due diligence process is all about and like what's the group doing. So what TUC did, um, and this may be related to the review, annual review, or this may be related to, let's say, the, the, the sandbox entry or the incubation entry of the projects, right? Uh, I could not make sufficient distinction when exactly the TOC follows this process, but they had the process called technical due diligence. So this is a separate committee or a, or a group of people who, who do the technical uh, deep dive into the project. And, um, they they do all the due diligence and it's open for comments. It's not just the committee community who is part of this due diligence process are involved. In fact, the the process is open for anybody in the community. But um, the TOC would like to have a report from uh, the DD team um, as part of uh, the the approval processes whenever it is involved. So, um, and, and of course the TOC uh, did set up a general guidelines on what's the responsibility of due diligence team and what are they supposed to do and how can they keep their uh, discussions or the points objectively. Um, like there is defined set of guidelines around that for the due diligence uh, process. So, um, yeah, this is, this is all from the review process. And when I was reading through some of the documents, I also found that one aspect which might help us as well is for any project to graduate, CNCF mandated that the project has its own governance mechanism. And this governance mechanism spans across for everything. And they mandated that there is a strict versioning scheme in terms of releases. They mandated that there is a strict uh, uh, process set up for any newcom 
community member who wants to contribute and there should be a strict pathway for them to um, move or become a maintainer of the project and, and all that right so i'm not going to go into details of what the governance mechanism guidelines are put up but it's mandatory for each project to have one um so and in, in, in apart from the due diligence and the tag review just for projects to enter into CNCF, there is also this process or optional process of thick presentations that happens. Um, which, I mean, if we want to equate this to Hyperledger, then of course there is a request that TUC makes for project teams to come and present. Um, but I fail to understand clearly what the SIC uh, presentation means. I, I don't know exactly if this is like a special group uh, which works with the project or this is uh, part of the TOC itself. So that's about the CNCF TOC uh, annual review process and the highlights or the things that I liked or like the, the summary of the review process all in all. Um, so just there are a few other um, points that I felt could help us uh, from Hyperledger, like for instance, in terms of setting up uh, the agenda items or how the TUC meetings happen, uh, they do have a running document where agenda items are put up. Um, and, and one thing that I liked over here is like, everybody knows what's up for TUC to discuss in the next uh, meeting or so. And the other thing that I liked um, in the way um, the, the meeting agendas are set is they have uh, designated time in the year where only certain things happen, right? For instance, once every two months, there is a designated time uh, when the tag reviews happen. And there is a designated time in the year where the uh, project review processes ha ha happen. And in those TUC discussions, in those TUC meetings, there are no other agendas picked up. And um, I think we discussed about the fallback voting process that CNCF follows. And then um, in each TOC meeting, there is only one agenda, like they, they do one thing in each meeting. And um, and in the some of the recordings that I saw, I never come, came across a verbose um, um, way of reviews, right? I know like this this page itself goes against my own point because I have so much data on this page. Um, but that's something. And last but not the least, um, I found that TUC meetings they run with their cameras turned on. And I pasted a link uh, for one of the meeting where also the review happens in their TUC review call. So that's the uh, summary. I will take a pause and open up for discussion. Thank you, Arno. Um, David? Uh, I do like the idea of an annual review. I've kind of thought that was something that we've been missing. I know we used to have projects come and present their reviews to us instead of just doing the report. So I think maybe once a year, it would be good to actually have a project representative come and do the review live. I think that would help. Um, I also like the idea of having an advocate for the project uh, or like a TOC member that is an advocate for the review. I'm not sure if they're an advocate for the project in general. Like that was one of my questions is, can the TOC member that's, that's the representative for the review be a member of the project or should it be an outsider? Um, I could not find a general guidelines, but that's a question we can get go back and um, probably ask somebody from the CNCF or maybe read to some of their documents. I, I tried reading, uh, searching for any recommendations on that. I could not find any. Okay, thanks, but, uh, but good job. And I do like the idea of the annual review. Yes, Peter. Thank you, Arun. Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned these seasonal tasks that they have, but they don't add anything else to the agenda. 
do you happen to know what is roughly the ratio of those type of meetings that they have versus the open agenda items type of meetings like most of the year is it open agenda or do they actually spend most of the year just with the specific tasks that then don't have agenda items on the meetings because of them um good question i did not create any start around that uh, but few things were like projects had annual review so i'm assuming there are like designated months where only the review happens for all the projects and um, every two months they have a tag review process so once in two months i'm assuming they do have a cadence call for tags to come in and present um, but but uh, that's a good question i think i've taken the feedback if possible i'll go back and get some answers on that question the agenda distribution aspect right you want to start mm -hmm. around how the okay yeah thank you All right, yes, if nobody is speaking, I will jump in and say, I agree with the review, the annual review. It seems to be kind of like a middle ground from the extremes we went through. One which was to have projects report, you know, basically come and present the report every time to not having them come at all. I think that's a good compromise. Thanks, Anand. Hey, Tracy. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I guess uh, I have a couple of questions or thoughts on this that, that uh, we should probably discuss. One is, um, is annual enough, uh, given that projects can go inactive within a quarter? Um, so obviously, you know, I think annual is is a way to to ensure that um, you know we're at least looking at things on a regular basis. Um, although the quarterly reports should help us somewhat with that, I'm just not sure we're diligent enough with the quarterly reports to be able to see some of the stuff that we need to see. Um, and then you know, is the is the general suggestion like I I'm. I feel like the CNCF process is a lot deeper than what we do with the quarterly reports because somebody actually goes through and really looks at the, um, you know, the, the specific details. And so, you know, is that what we're suggesting when I hear like Dave and Arno, you suggesting that the project come in on an annual basis and, and discuss what's happening is that we still have somebody in the TOC who's doing that uh, deeper diligence. Uh, and so I think those are kind of the, the discussion items that I'd like to talk through. Um, thoughts or comments from or not, or maybe I'll note down for later discussion. I guess I'll comment since I also agreed with the annual review. So I, I do still think the quarterly reports, written reports would have value. I'm just thinking a deeper dive once a year would also be good. Uh, and I do think I like the idea of having a TOC member talk to that person maybe before the report, review it before they come to the TOC, make sure they're kind of on point and going to the right level of detail and pushing them on areas they need to be pushed on before they report to the whole TSC. Thanks, Dave. So um, what you're suggesting is we have a annual deep dive in addition to the quarterly report that we already have. Yes, I think so. Thanks, David. Hey, Jim. 
Yeah, thanks, Sharon. Uh, thanks for doing this work. Uh, I guess first a point of clarification. I believe we're all assuming the review process is done to both sandboxes and incubation. Is that correct? Because in your write-up, it's all sandbox. Good question. Um, I tried searching for documents or meeting recordings, but I could not find um, the at least the TOC document explicitly mentions it's a sandbox review process, sandbox annual review. Yeah, but I am I, assuming they should also do this for incubation. Yeah, so I think from from David and Tracy, I, I believe we are talking about uh, mainly for the incubation projects because I, I I feel like that's where we need some um, rejuvenation, uh, so to speak. Um, and honestly, I think it's a tougher process compared to reviewing the um, uh, the equivalent of the sandbox, maybe our labs or or um, or applications, uh, because for incubations you have to hold the project team responsible for especially in the case of lack, lack of progress. You know, the TOC needs to do its job for calling those out. And I'm an engineer. I'm not good at doing those type of things, but we need to, you know, we need to force ourselves to do our job because I think that's where TOC's responsibility really um, uh, lies, right? Um, so... Yeah, just want to call this out. I, I I believe that's the assumption when when David and and uh, Tracy spoke. Um, just want to confirm. It's Tracy. Yeah, so I do I do think that we're talking about incubation and graduated uh, projects within the Hyper Ledger Foundation. I think you know. CNCF's process is more towards what we would consider labs um, and potentially moving labs forward. Uh, I do think that there's probably some use in thinking about what we want to do with labs um, from the perspective of do they want to stay as a lab? Um, are they active? Should we be um, doing anything with them? But I think that the Request from the governing board was specifically for our incubation and active projects, um, so projects in that life cycle. Um, and then, you know, I think Jim, you've made a really good point about, um, you know, doing our jobs, if you will, from the perspective of in the past, the TOC hasn't wanted to be um, very strict. In, in how we approach projects, right? Uh, we've been a bit more open and lenient about, about you know, projects that are um, maybe not <laughs> submitting their project reports or, or things like that, right? Like this, this would really uh, make us have to be very diligent about, um, you know, what it is that these projects are doing and, and, how, and what we're going to do with them, right? So we would, as we, think about documenting a process, we have to be thinking about what, what are the potential outcomes, right? So what is the, um, you know, kind of state diagram, if you will, that we would be putting together, uh, you know, the, that project life cycle, each of those lines, when would we in this project reviews uh, move uh, along one of those lines and what is kind of the criteria for that? Um, I think is is really something that is important. So I thank you for bringing that up, Jim. Thanks, Tracy. I raised my own hand, so I'll probably go next. Um, so uh, reg regarding that uh, process of labs and versus sandbox environment and CNCF. Um, so sorry, sandbox face in CNCF. Um, I wanted to bring this also up for discussion say asking if we should include, I know for now labs is not part of the TOC, uh, where the TOC does not want to get involved into that level of details. But um, just from an encouragement point of view, would it make sense if TOC requests for a um, annual review of these projects as well? And if any labs, so there is no, um, 
punishment as such if project does not want to come up and present to the TOC, but rather it's an incentive if they come and present to the TOC, then it helps them understand where they stand in terms of incubating further. And it also helps um, TOC or maybe gen in general, uh, the community members to know what's the direction that community is moving towards and what kind of projects exist and where are the collaboration opportunities. Yes, Tracy. I, I think Ruin to answer that question, one of the things that comes to mind is I think there's uh, something in the range of 50 labs um, that could be a bit of uh, a challenge as far as timing, right? We could spend all of our um, time reviewing labs in these meetings. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, if half of the labs decide that they want to present, right? That's still 25. So, you know, I, I guess the question becomes, you know, in the past, I guess just, well, in the past, in the recent past, what we've done is to say, well, these, uh, these labs look like they're interesting potentially to move to an incubation state. Maybe we should make a specific request to come in and present, but I don't really know what the right, um, the right distribution of labs presenting to the TOC is versus uh, spending time on the incubation and graduated project. Thanks, Tracy. Hey, Marcus. Yes, yeah, so, so my feeling about having the, the labs also talk to TOC, I mean, it's great. I mean, if there is a, a lab which has something nice and which can also be, I mean, go going further as an independent uh, project, right? Um, then it's fine, right? But I mean, there, we also have many labs which, I mean, just host yet another feature um, of of a of a of a project, right? Which is not clear if this will go in at some point in, into the actual project. I mean, like like. I mean, like developing a fabric feature, for instance, doing that in a lab environment is, um, I mean, pretty common thing uh, I saw. And, um, but I mean, we're talking about the labs that every lab uh, could, uh, I mean, grow and incubate, right, as, as a standalone project. But uh, yeah, I think the, the structure of the lab currently offers to be uh, I mean, whatever it wants to be in the lab, right? Uh, thanks, Marcus. Hey, David. I think maybe a good compromise but would be just to ask the labs, each of the labs once a year, if they have anything they'd like to share with the TOC. I suspect most of them would not, but there might be a few that do, and those would probably be good ones to have agenda topics for. So not calling it like a report, but just asking if they have anything they want to share with the TOC. Thanks, David. Hey, Anna. So, I mean, on that front, I just want to remind you that uh, we have in the past extended an open invitation to labs to come to the TAC uh, or uh, TSC at the time. <laughs> and that would be the talk now, but uh, to, to basically present on what's going on in their lab, it was just also an opportunity for them to advertise their lab and maybe get more exposure. And unfortunately, this has been taken up by only very few labs. There may be some labs that are not aware of that. There are new labs coming up all the time. Maybe that's something we should bring back up to the labs, but we yeah, have I done. think. Yeah, my point was more instead of an open invitation, ask actually asking them once a year, do you have anything to share? You might we might get a little bit more uptake on that. Yeah. No, you might be right. Awesome. I like that. Uh, yeah. Um, Marcus, are you are uh, you yes. Okay. yeah, so I was I mean, I just was just thinking that I mean, wouldn't be the lab stewards the right um party to suggest uh, which lab could basically, I mean, um, talk to the TOC directly. I mean, or the lab students could en encourage us and pre-select uh, some labs and then approach them and say, hey, you're making good progress here. Why don't you 
presented the TOC, it's a good opportunity to uh, get more visibility, something like that. I mean, I, I see this maybe as one of the responsibilities of the lab stewards. Thanks, Marcus. So um, I think I want to, um, I don't see anybody raising hand, so I'll raise my hand virtually and want to talk about two points that you brought up. The first one was um, the the uh, project teams uh, joining uh, the, uh, let's say a lab project having a sub part of a bigger project, which is already in Hyperledger, which has moved past the labs phase. So um, I think some of them, if we can ask the project team itself, if they are aware of any labs that they eventually want to integrate into in their either annual review or maybe the quarterly report, we could ask them to talk about those aspects as well. And um, so to, and for those projects who have not found their uh, parent project where they want to merge into, that could be an opportunity for project team and the labs to um, collaborate. Now to answer, I mean, for the other point that you brought up, I think it's okay to send in a general reminder to every project and um, be open for if they want to come and present to TOC. This is my thought on the second aspect. Um, yeah, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Um, just want to confirm our, our thinking uh, around the sandbox specifically, or, or the lab, sorry. Uh, it, it seems like with CNCF, they have a pretty stringent uh, criteria with sandbox, uh, which has, I believe is the equivalent of our, our labs. And the process they apply to the sandbox, what it's it's even more stringent than what we do with incubation. So are we, but I think from the, the, the past couple um, comments, I think we're saying, we're not gonna change what we do. Uh, we're gonna continue to be very, open very lenient to um, to labs um, so they you know continue to have the space um, and we're not gonna apply any sort of uh, process to those labs other than uh, the suggestion to invite them to present to TOC which um, I I can um, identify with the teams, not to take on that, um, take up that that offer because I, I don't I don't know what would be the purpose of presenting uh, other than using this forum to hopefully get uh, more people to to know about them. But there are other ways, right? And it's not like TLC calls are widely participated by by the community. So I guess what I'm saying is it's. It sounds like we're we're not changing our practice around labs. Yeah, can I suggest that the labs be a separate topic? It's kind of a distraction. I think the main point here that we want to get to at least in the next three minutes is if we want to do anything around uh, incubation and graduated projects. I know it'll take more than three minutes, but maybe we could try to summarize the discussion so far. Um, so, this, right, so Jim, I think let's bring this topic again in the next week's uh, discussion. And I saw Ramakrishna raising hand, but I don't know. Uh, do you want to say something? No, uh, I was going to discuss lab, but as Dave said, it's not enough time for it now. So, maybe another time. Perfect. I think, Tracy, we have an agenda for next week at, on discussions on labs, at least. Um, Okay, um, so so thank you everyone. Uh, I think the summary, uh, to summarize today's discussion, there are a few things that um, there is general consensus among the TOC, which I heard that we are open to uh, improve. And these things include uh, annual review process in addition to the quarterly review that happens right now. And the, the TOC advocate who will uh, be with the project and help them um, set up the annual review process, and then they will be presenting to the rest of the TOC. And um, I think there is also general consensus among uh, the, the uh, 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 
I forgot. They, they, I think it was like cadence related thing, the TOC agenda and the cadence. Um, I don't see anybody discussing about the tag process or the due diligence, uh, technical due diligence community, but it would be nice if TOC here um, also discusses about those aspects in our upcoming meetings. Uh, so with that, Tracy, back to you. All right. So thanks for uh, taking us through this today, Arun. So I think for next week, uh, Rama task force for the project badging, I think is the, the task force discussion. Um, and then I think it, it would be good. Um, and maybe we'll put together some uh, initial draft of what it might look like for the project review, uh, for the annual project review, and, and we can discuss that further. And then um, I don't know that we'll have time for labs next week, but we'll see uh, when we can get that one added to the agenda. So we'll just kind of keep that running. So with that, I think I will let you go for the week and we will talk again next week. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks.